exactly what you want to see. Let's run this puppy in. Score a touchdown and tie this game. Life, run for your life, touchdown on one play. Worked on this in practice. Touchdown. It's up to Kelvin Benjamin. This is all you, buddy. Kelvin Benjamin for a touchdown. Oh, he toasted his man. Holmes toasted his man. Spin move. Oh! Oh! What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the Water Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of the Milwaukee Brewers Legends Fantasy Draft Series here on MLB The Show 22. That is right, we return to the franchise and we are almost done with season number one. We've got this episode, which is the final episode of the regular season, then we've got next episode, was the which encompasses the entire playoffs, then the episode after that is the off season. So... We're moving right along through this first season, and I think we're doing a pretty good job to start season number one. We are 89-56 and 56 to start the season, well, to, to wrap up the season, I guess. We're in late September, kind of like middle to late September, and we've got about 17 games left to go in the season, including the one that we're going to play today. So, is there a way that we can get to 100 wins? Yes, there is a way. If we win every single game, we'd finish with about 106, 105, 106 wins, maybe. Uh, so that's if we win every single game. I don't think we are going to win every single game. So, I mean, we've got about a six-game buffer to finish with 100 wins. I think it is possible to do it. Will we do it? I hope so. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and find out. If you guys are excited, hit that like button, subscribe channel, join the Juice Club, and let's get into this action. Okay, here we are in to September 14th. That was a weird way to start the video. <laughs> we are at September 14th is the date. We're 89 and 56 like I mentioned in the the video. We are 15 games ahead of the second team which is the Cincinnati Reds. We're going to be taking on Julio Urias or Urias, however you want to say his name. I think it's Urias. Uh, whatever. He's playing for the Cardinals. We're taking on the Cardinals and if you know how much about if you know a lot about me you know that i absolutely despise the cardinals because i'm a reds fan so i uh, i hate the cardinals with a burning passion so that's why we're gonna play, be playing this game and plus we're going to bush stadium i think is it still called bush i don't know if it's still called bush stadium it might be i don't know but if we take a look at the the calendar so far we won the first game against the cardinals uh, at the end of the last episode we simulated it but we've like i said we got about uh, two and a half weeks all put together we got two games into october the final two games of the season which are a four game set finishing the four game set against the marlins i think it is possible that we win 100 games i, I sure hope so we can take a look at the stats really quick we're gonna go through a an entire um like stats breakdown and stuff and like taking a look at who played well for the pitching staff and for the the hitting or for the lineup we'll take a look at that after the video or after the game when we come back so that uh, we can get ready for the postseason because obviously we're going to make the postseason. We are the first team by a whole lot. I guess we could still lose if we lost every single game and the Reds won every single game, which is a very, very slim chance of happening. We could still lose. There's still a, enough games for us to lose. But if we take a look at the standings, we have not clinched yet, obviously, because I said there's still a small chance to lose. But if we win, like, say, three or four more games and they lose three or four more games, then it's guaranteed clinch. So we are probably going to be the National League Central representative in the playoffs. We have 89 wins. We are the best team in the in baseball with 89 wins. The Dodgers are next with 88. And then you've got 85 from the A's, which is just weird to say. And that's about it. So there's three teams with plus 85 or more wins. The Red Sox have 80 and the Blue Jays have 80, 81. And the Blue Jays have 80. So there's a few teams that are playing pretty well. It looks like... Depending on the wins, it looks like that our World Series opponent, if we were to make it, would be probably the Red Sox. But we have to get through the Dodgers, who have 88 wins. It's going to be pretty tough. So we can uh, we can quickly look at the depth chart, not the depth chart, the lineup, and see who's been playing well. So Ozzie Smith has been hitting well in the leadoff spot. Mike Trout with 38 home runs has been, been hitting very, very solidly. 51 for Big Poppy. David Ortiz has been killing the game. Uh, 35 from Griffey, kind of a low end season, but maybe he's not hitting right the four spot. Maybe we should switch him around. I don't, I don't know. 
Uh, Albert Pools has got 26, 110 RBIs. He's hitting really well. John Carlos Stanton, who we switch in and out with uh, Nelson Cruz, who is also hitting a lot of home runs. He's playing very well since coming over from the trade. And Miguel Cabrera also got traded at the deadline. We played with him last episode. He has 20 home runs, 65 RBIs, about 281 average. That's pretty good. Salvador Perez holding it down at catcher. And then Jackie Robinson is, is playing very, very well. On the bench, we don't really get a lot of substitutions in there. George Springer comes in and plays very well. But other than that, we really don't get a lot of crazy substitutions. Nancy Swanson, Swanson has played okay in his time that he's uh, gotten to start. The pitching rotation, uh, Randy Johnson with 13-6, and 14-9 and nine for Clayton Kershaw, but he's cold right now. Uh, 15 and 6 for Madison Bumgarner. He pitched very, very well in the last episode. Dontre Willis is 11 and 9. Jack Flaherty is 16 and 8. Okay, a lot of our our pitchers are pitching fairly well. The ERAs are a little bit high, but it's okay. Then in the bullpen, we've got uh, Blazovic, who we brought up, I think, in the September call ups. We brought him up, and Giovanni Gallegos is 4 and 0. With 3-4 ERA, what's how many saves has he got? He's got 35 saves, 5 blown. That's pretty good. How many does Brian Wilson have? He's got 3 saves, 5 blown. Okay. What about Tim Hill? No saves, no blown. Okay. So Giovanni Gallegos is most likely coming in for most of the, the closing situations, which is what I want. He's our closer. The rest of the bullpen is pitching okay. There's some guys with a high ERA, ERA like Sir Anthony Dominguez, but that's just because he's such a low overall going up against such high overall hitters that he's got such a high over uh, high ERA. Same thing with Jordan uh, Blazovic. He's the 74 overall rookie, and he's not playing very well. But we had to bring somebody up, and I thought he would benefit the most. So that's a kind of quick run through of how everybody's doing before we actually take like a, a deeper dive and talk about specific players uh, at the end of the video. We've got really nothing else to do except for play this game. We'll also go in to like awards and all that kind of stuff and see who won like Silver Slugger, Gold Glove. All that stuff will be at the end of the episode. I hope you guys are excited because we've got Brewers Baseball versus the St. Louis Cardinals. And I think, should we rock the old school 2000s Brewers Road or should we rock... I kind of want to rock these ones, the, the old school 70s. And what do the Cardinals wear? Do the Cardinals wear their, their home ones? I think the Cardinals should just wear their home normal uniforms. Although I like these alternate. Yeah, let's, they'll, they'll rock those ones. So we'll rock the powder blues. Or I guess that's not powder. Is that powder blue or is that sky blue? That's not really. That's probably powder blue. So they're rocking the powder blues. We're rocking. Uh, they're rocking the, the kind of faded white, I guess is what you could call it. It's kind of like a cream color. And we've got the, uh, the powder blue. So I hope you guys are excited. Hit that like button if you are. Subscribe to the channel. Join the Juice Club. It is still called Bush Stadium. I wasn't sure if they got a new sponsor or not. So we're headed to Bush. Let's get it done. And welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. MLB The Show has action out of the NL Central. It's the Milwaukee Brewers, the St. Louis Cardinals. John Shabby and Chris Singleton with you. And a couple of division rivals going head-to-head -to -head today, Siggy. I think when these two teams match up, that regardless, you're looking to bury that other claw because of what they've done to you over the course of the season. You figure, hey, it's my time to return the favor. Just about ready to go. And on the hill, the southpaw from Mexico, Julio Urias. He touched the ninth inning his last time out. Really wanted the complete game. Didn't get it, but he did. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's the start of the game. Ozzie Smith leading off. And you know how this series works. We play the first three innings of live baseball so you guys can get a feel for who the cardinals have in their starting lineup the one through nine hitters and then we simulate or no, i don't well i cut it i don't simulate i i play the games or i play the rest of the innings until something good happens and then i bring you guys back in like a a, a score from us either a home run or a, a run scored by a double or a hit or anything like that and uh, i also bring you guys back in if they score because it shows my disappointment in the team but that's how the series usually works until we get to the ninth inning when uh, I bring you guys back in for live gameplay. I guess the cuts are live gameplay too, but you know what I mean. I don't know how I feel about these powder blue unis. They, they're they all right. They kind of remind me of like the Royals back in like the 80s. That's what they kind of remind me of. 
for a double play. That's going to be another foul ball. I think I'm lowering the PCI a little bit. I am. I thought I was lowering the PCI a little bit too much. Gallegos is throw, not Gallegos. <laughs> Urias has, or Urias, however you say his name, has uh, thrown four straight fastballs now. I just like saying Urias, but I think it's Urias. Either way you want to pronounce it. He has thrown four straight fastballs. Is he going to go throw a fifth? He does it. He does. He does throw a fastball. But I fouled it off. So Mike Trout struggles in his first at bat. Oh, they got Tyler Stevenson? All right. Cool. Big Poppy. 51 home runs on the year. That's what happens when you've got a DH. Ground, uh, Big Poppy. First baseman, David Ortiz, not as good as DH David Ortiz, that's for sure. He doesn't need to waste his time uh, playing defense when he can just smack balls over the wall. They really are expecting me to steal with Ozzy Smith. I don't know if I want to or not, especially on a lefty pitcher. He's really scared that I'm going to steal. He is protecting that first base lead right there. I don't think I'm gonna, at least not on the first inning. I'm, I'm maybe if I get him on in the later half of the inning or later half of the game, I may send him. That's too hit, hard hit of a ball. Is that Kenny Lofton out there in center field? It doesn't look like it. Maybe it's Curtis Granderson. I don't know who's out there. I guess we'll find out. But David Ortiz gets a single, and now we got the kid, Ken Griffey Jr., to the plate. Two on, one out. He's got a chance for a couple RBIs, maybe even three if he could get a three-run homer. That would be awesome. We have yet to hit a home run with either Big Poppy or Ken Griffey Jr. on video, like in an actual game. But that's an RBI. Ozzie Smith will come home. Good job from Griffey. We've hit home runs with Nelson Cruz, with Josh Donaldson, I think, in the beginning, like the very first episode or something. I think we hit a home run with Josh Donaldson. I'm pretty sure. Uh, who else have we? We haven't hit many home runs in, in actual, like, played games. We haven't hit one with Albert Pujols yet. If David Ortiz didn't have 21 speed, I probably want to set him there. The machine takes the plate, and he's 1-0 count. Going against his former team in real life, the St. Louis Cardinals. Runner on first and second. One run is already scored in the inning. Thanks to Ken Griffey Jr. Oh, that fastball was up and I thought it was going to drop. I thought, as you can see by the PCI, I thought it was going to drop. I thought he was going to put it down low like where he put the, the second fastball. But that one's in the air. That's not going to get anybody in there. Nope, Big Poppy's not quick enough to beat that run. Oh, they got Moose out there playing third. Okay. Is that Curtis Granderson out there? I can't tell. Giancarlo, don't call me. Mike Stanton is at the plate. Now, he didn't play last episode because we switched him out for Nelson Cruz. But he's in this one, and he's trying to go for a Stantonian home run. Let's see if we can do it. I have not hit one with Giancarlo yet. I don't think so. I'd have to go back and watch the other episodes. Ooh, that was close. That could have been very easily called a strike. Come on, Stan. I need you to put one in the outfield. Like that. No, that's a that's a second base out. Oh, he's going to go to first base. Okay. And that is end of the inning. But we do get one run scored thanks to Griffey knocking in Ozzie Smith. And the big unit. I want to slap my big unit all over this Cardinal team. Jose Reyes. Did that say 39 home runs? I need to hold on. I need to check uh I need to check the stats. Player stats for the Cardinals. How many home it does it does say 39 home. I didn't think he was a power hitter. 39 homes home runs is pretty impressive. 81 RBIs, 43 stolen bases. He's hitting 84. He's got 843 stolen base percentage. What's his average? 296? Jose Reyes having a really good season. I did not think he was that much of a power hitter, but he's killing the game in season number one. Let's see if the big unit, Randy Johnson, can slide through there. Miguel Cabrera playing the hot corner. 
We'll snag that one for the first out. Starling Marte. Okay. First pitch is thankfully called a strike. This umpire is being very generous. That's back-to-back -back first pitches that he's called a strike. That probably shouldn't be. He fouls off the one two split or the the, the one oh one splitter. I don't know what I know what I'm saying. He fouls off the oh one splitter, and he also fouls off the oh two slider. So let's go back to the splitter. And doesn't chase it. It's one two. I thought we might have been able to get him there, but we don't. And we'll go with the fastball, and we will get it popped out to left. Get there, Stanton. Giancarlo will get it. All right. Good job, Stanton. And now it's Stan the Man Musual. The Stanimal will come to the plate. Hitting 288 on the year. I think it said he had 37 home runs on the year. Maybe like in the low 30s or the mid 30s. I can't exactly remember because I just glanced at it while I was looking at Jose Re Reyes. Oh! Completely out swing, swinging that one. We don't get him chasing on the splitter. Can we get him on the fastball? He goes for it, but he fouls it off. So we'll go for slider again. This one got him chased on the first time. And he will make contact with it past Ozzie Smith, and it'll be a hit. Ozzie was just a little bit too slow on that one. Not good enough reaction time. Roberto Clemente. He playing right field for the Cardinals. Okay. There's the splitter going right past him. And we will go with a slider. 0-2 oh, count. Got him swinging. And we set down the inning. Randy Johnson with a good inning. And now we got Miggy. Miguel Cabrera. To the plate. To start this inning. And he will first pitch swing. Jose Reyes will be there. And he will throw him out to Musial. Okay. Miggy's down quick. But now we got Salvi. Salvador Perez. Can we get a base hit with you? I would much appreciate it. Nope, not swinging at that. Almost swung at it, but not swinging at it. Let's see if maybe he'll throw me something on the second pitch. He throws me something a little bit better, but I didn't time it very well. I was a little bit late on it. I might have been able to send that over the wall if I had good enough timing. Those kind of pitches always get a lot of height on them. Same thing with that. Is that going? That's got distance. But Roberto Clemente, there's a reason he's one of the best right fielders of all time. Jackie Robinson. Let's see if he can make this ball disappear. And he will swing first pitch. Send that right up to center field. And Jackie's on base. Can Jackie steal first base? I don't know, because I don't like stealing on, on lefties. It's a lot harder to. But you know what? I'm going to try it here. I'm going to lead off, see if he throws. If he throws me first time, I won't steal again. He doesn't see it. Jackie, go! Get on your horse, Jackie! Boom. 27 steals for Jackie Robinson as Ozzie Smith comes up to the plate. He took a 1-0 count there. Let's see what Urias throws here. The screwball has no chance. Or it's a sweeping curve. It's not a screwball. 2-0 count to the Wizard. And he will get a nice pitch. Generous pitch. But he doesn't do much with it. <sighs> That's okay. It is Curtis Graves. I'm proud of myself that I, I figured out that was Curtis Granderson. 58 home runs for Barry Bonds. He's killing it right now. He is dominating the American League. Quickly an 0-2 count to Granderson. The Grandy Man. Can he strike out here? Not yet. 143 RBIs for Barry Bonds on the Astros. The Astros are going to be a problem if we come up against them in the World Series. We still got to get to the World Series, though. Quick first out. Fly out to left field in Giancarlo Stanton. Kyle Schwarber. Now, in MLB simulations that I've seen, Schwarber can go crazy. He can mash the baseball. 
in simulations. So we got to be very careful to where we place these pitches. Okay, not a good placement from those two off-speed pitches. We'll see where this one goes. Fastball. Got him chasing. And now we'll go slider. 2-2. Here we go. He doesn't chase the slider. This this Kyle Schwarber guy, he's got good play discipline and good vision. But he chases the splitter low and inside. And we got him striking out. Trevor Story. Okay. He will sit on that one and look for it. 1 0 or 0 1 count, excuse me. 0 1. Doesn't chase the splitter. He does, these guys don't really chase the splitter that much, is what I'm seeing from this first two innings. But he sits on that fastball again and lets it go past. You got to take that bat off the shoulder, Trevor. Ooh, how did he sit on that one? That's a super good take. I don't know how he stood by on that one. He doesn't chase the splitter outside. So now it is a full count. Trevor Story has not even swung the bat. There we go for the first time. The first time he takes the bat off the shoulder. Here comes the splitter. Got him swinging with the splitter that time on the 3-2. And that is how we end the second inning. We start the third. Mike Trout's to the plate. Didn't do very well in his first at bat. All fastballs, but I could not hit any of them. And he throws me, was that a fastball again? It was a fastball again. I was early on it. And Trout's down to start the inning. David Ortiz, David, David. Can you get me a home run? I sure as heck hope so. That's going to be in the air to left field. And it will be caught. Kyle Schwarber. Who's playing DH for these guys? I don't even know. Maybe we haven't come up against him. Ken Griffey Jr. He's got the RBI. I don't know if he can get an RBI again with a home run. Oh, here we go. That one's a great pitch. Hit right up to right field. Clemente will field it and throw it into the cutoff. Actually, no, to second base. And Griffey's on base for the second time. Two singles. I really would like Albert Pujols to hit a home run against the Cardinals. That would just make my day. Absolutely make my day. Not there. We get another opportunity, though. Oh, one count. Top of the third. Two outs. One on. Oh, probably should have swung at that. Probably should have swung at that. Nope, that's a that's a ball. I knew that one the entire way. Urias, Urias, whatever you want to call him. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna call him Urias. He throws me a great fastball, but I was so early. Oh, poo holes. That could have been gone if you had better timing. He gives me a great pitch there. Do we send Griffey? No, we don't send Griffey. Granderson's got a decent arm. I probably probably would have made it, though. And Giancarlo Stanton to the plate. Talk about power. Nope, that's not going to be one. That is not going to be one. Come on, Stanton. You're one of the biggest guys in the major leagues, and you've got the power to prove it. There it is. A ground out. To, oh, I thought he was throwing home for a second. I was like, why are you throwing home? But he throws to Urias, and that is the end of the third. Well, end of the top of the third. Mike Moustakis only hitting 181. The Moose is not producing. Manu, the Moose is not produce. And he pops that one out. That's a can of corn right there. Who is their nine hitter? It's Tyler Stevenson. So we must have already seen the... The DH, I just didn't realize who it was. Oh, wow. He was way out in front of that one. He went one for, for four, one for four in the last game that we won in the first game of the series and hit a home run. And he will send that one to center field. Mike Trout underneath it. That's two down. I'm not sure who the DH is. 
The DH is not Jose Reyes. He was an all-star, though. I would assume with 39 home runs. And that one fouled off. Fouls that away. Slider time. Ooh, slider up in the zone and he made contact with it. Here comes the fastball. Doesn't chase the fastball down low. That's kind of annoying. I thought he would change that for sure. But he sits and watches the splitter go, and that is the end of the third inning. You guys have seen the entire lineup for the Cardinals. I'll see you when something good happens. That's going to get over. That's at least one run, maybe two. No, it's only one. It's only one. Granderson did a good job. But we take a two-run lead now, thanks to Big Poppy. That's going to get home, though. I'm sending him. Griffey will get two RBIs in the day, and we are up 3-0 on the Cardinals. Oh, that's going to get through. I'm going to send J uh, David Ortiz. I don't know if it's going to work or not. It will work. And this inning just going downhill for the Cardinals. I'm going to send him home. I don't know if this is going to be worth it or not. Clemente's got a rocket. It wasn't worth it. That one's gone. I wasn't sure if it was going to get out or not, but Roberto Clemente ends the shutout that Randy Johnson was going for. Clemente sends that one deep, and the Cardinals are on the board. I don't like to see it, not one bit. It didn't look like it was getting out all the way, but it does sneak over the wall. Stanton had no shot at it, and it's out. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to close this game out. Bottom nine, 4-1 is the score. Jose Reyes first pitch swinging on Gallegos, and he will ground out to second base. He almost got there. He's got some speed to him. Well, they're one down. I found out who the DH is. It is Starling Marte. I figured that I got confused because usually Kyle Schwarber is always the DH of whatever team he's on, but they actually have him playing left field today instead of Starling Marte, who I would probably have in left field. I'd, I'd have him switched. Uh, so that Marte's in left field and and uh, Schwarber's DHing, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. That's a generous strike call, and Marte goes down looking. Stan Musial is up to the plate, and he will first pitch swing to Ozzy Smith, and that's the game. 4 1 victory, and we sweep them 2 0, or 2 0, I guess, in the, the little small two game series. And the boys are. 90 win ball game club we are 10 wins away from 100 and we've got about a week and a half to go in the season two weeks maybe can we do it i sure hope so randy johnson looked good urias didn't do very well he struggled really really often throughout this game and then roberto clemente was my real just like the problem uh and as you can see trevor story got a a, a triple he tried to extend the triple into a inside the park home run, but he was clearly not fast enough, and we just threw him out at home. It was embarrassing. I didn't even want to show you because it was so embarrassing. <laughs> but he does get counted for a triple, I guess. But we do get a victory 4-1, and that makes us a 90-win baseball team. You love to see it. Okay, so let's simulate the rest of this month of September and see how the boys are doing. So let's do that. We get, oh, that's a lot of wins, although not very many. We lost the whole series against the Mets. We got swept by the Mets. And then we lost two of three so far against the Reds. We are 94 and 61, so we need some big time victories here. Big Poppy sustained a broken hand. That is not what I wanted to see. He's probably done for the postseason. Wow, okay. Big Poppy is done for the postseason. That just means that Nelson Cruz can come in and play 
DH for us or John Carlos Stan, depending on uh, who's out there. I guess it can be Stan. I, we can always switch. It doesn't really matter. 95 wins. Uh, we have 27 players on the active roster because he's on the, the thingy. So we need to bring somebody else up. Let's bring up. I don't even know who else to bring up. We don't really have that many great players in the minor leagues. Let's bring in. Let's bring up Josh Lowe, I guess. Add him to the 40 man. Move him to the majors. There we go. Josh Lowe can come up and play some, maybe some innings for us. Who knows? We won against the Cardinals. We swept them again. The sounds, the AAA team didn't make the postseason. But the Shuckers, hardly know her. They won. You love to see that. And we have 98 wins, ladies and gentlemen. We need to win these last two games if we want to win 100 games this year. That is crazy to think about. But we have, uh, we lost, we, we should have got swept by the Mets. That's our, this is our real problem. If we wouldn't have, if we would have won at least two of these games, we'd have 100 wins by now. But we got swept by the Mets. I guess they were just too good. And we couldn't sweep the Marlins yet. And we do get 99 wins. Clayton Kershaw versus Tom Seaver. Is this going to be our 100 win of the season? Clayton Kershaw sustained an injury. And we do get it. We finished 162. We won the division. We're taking on the winner of the wild card playoffs. That is what you love to see. League leaders. David Ortiz did a lot of stuff. So we'll go around the league quickly. Batting average is won by uh, Wade Boggs. The leader in the hits is Ozzy Smith. Jimmy Rollins gets the at-bats. Doubles is led by Tony Gwynn. So is triples. Home runs is led by David Ortiz with 52. You got to think he would have had a couple more at least if he didn't break his hand. RBIs is led by Big Poppy. Runs is led by Mike Trout. Stolen bases is Barry Larkin. Base on balls is Harmon Killebrew. Wade Boggs gets on base percentage. Babe Ruth gets slugging. He was slugging 715 for the year. Babe Ruth went crazy this season. He had uh, how many home runs did he have? He had 49 home runs, 133 RBIs, and a 326 average. Babe Ruth killed the game. And then he also led an OPS. Phil Nierko wins the uh, wins the wins uh, by 20 with 20 wins. Then you got John Smoltz had five losses. Uh, Juan Martial had 47 saves. Pedro Martinez led everybody within a 2.78 ERA. Noah Syndergaard had the, home, the least amount of home runs allowed of 21. Pedro Martinez had the most shutouts with 7. And Pedro Martinez had the most strikeouts with 271. That's crazy. Look how the difference is between him and Kurt Schilling. Absolutely insane. He also had the most complete games. Is, is he going to win the Cy Young? I don't know. Eight complete games. He had the most innings pitched. Zach Efline wins uh, or leads in the walks allowed with 37. The whip? is Greg Maddox with a 103. Pitching war is Pedro Martinez. Pete Rose gets the batting war. And then we're back to the batting. So we'll quickly go through the a uh, the American League. And I won't uh, read the names, but you can see who is in the lead. Barry Bonds had 61 home runs. That's absolutely insane. We are probably going to try and trade for Barry Bonds, if not sign him in free agency, if he's available. He had a, a 757 slugging. Barry Bonds went wild this, or this season. And you're number one. Taylor Rogers had 49 saves. Catfish Hunter had four shutouts. 270 strikeouts for Lefty Grove. That's pretty crazy. There is everything that you need to see from that. We can go to the awards. We won National League MVP with David Ortiz. Awesome. That's what you want to see. The American League MVP, of course, is Barry Bonds because he just killed the game. The National League Cy Young winner is Phil, Nier Phil Nierko. Randy Johnson almost got it. He was in second. Lefty Grove takes home the American League Cy Young. The batting title in the National League goes to Wade Boggs. And Larry Doby, or Dobby, however you want to say his name, takes the batting title in the American League. The reliever of the year is Juan Martial and Bear... Uh, no, that's not right. Josh Hader. <laughs> there we go. Then the rookie of the year in the National League is Manny Ramirez. And obviously Babe Ruth is the rookie... Or not the rookie... Wait, what? We don't have a Hank Aaron award winner? Wait, hold on. Where's our Hank Aaron award winner? Barry Bonds and Babe Ruth. Okay, I skipped one. Manny Ramirez and Barry Bonds are Rookie of the Year. Golden Gloves. I'm not going to go through uh, the names, but I will go through American League and National League so you guys can see it. I'm, I'll say anything if we have a brewer that makes 
a gold glove. I don't think we're going to have any. We'll probably have a silver slugger, but we probably won't have a gold glove. We didn't have a gold glove. And so far, we don't have any silver sluggers because there's no silver slugger for the National League DH. We do have Ken Griffey Jr. and Mike Trout, but Griffey takes it home. And then McCutcheon took on the other one. Okay. So those are all the awards. We do get National League MVP with uh, David Ortiz. That's awesome. So the lineups. We've got Ozzie Smith did very, very well. 302 average, four home runs, 49 off guys. Obviously, Ozzie Smith is not a home run hitter. Mike Trout ended up with 43 home runs, 108 RBIs, and a 293 average. Probably could have done a little bit better in terms of his average, but he had 162 hits. He led the National League in runs scored. I mean, he did he did okay. He had a, a 3.9 OB, OBP, 6.14 slugging. I mean, he he did uh, he did very very well in the first season. John Carlos Stanton, 27 home runs, 77 RBIs, and a 3.05 average. Did he uh, do anything crazy in terms of like slugging percentage, 5.56, OPS is 9.30, nothing crazy. I mean, those are really good numbers. Obviously, don't get me wrong, but nothing outstanding, or like or outrageous, I should say. 38 home runs, 121 RBIs, and 292 average for Griffey. And he had a 364 OBP, 590 slugging, 954 OPS. Okay, good season for, for Griffey. 31 home runs, 126 RBIs, and a 322 average for Albert Pujols. The machine is uh, digressing, a little, digressing a little bit. Not great. 126 driven in. We saw that. He had a 395 OP, OBP. 560 slugging, 955 OPS. Good season for Albert Pools, but a big season for the late game acquisition of Nelson Cruz, the deadline acquisition. 41 home runs, 111 RBIs, and a 267 average. Crazy season for Nelson Cruz. And he also had 594, uh, 549 slugging and 872 OPS. Miguel Cabrera, a little bit disappointed season. 22 home runs, 73 RBIs. 287 average good numbers for Cabrera but he uh he needs more time here in in uh Milwaukee maybe next season he'll do even better Salvador Perez I'm thinking about possibly trading Salvador Perez for a legendary catcher we'll find out in the offseason I guess or in next season sometime but he had 25 home runs 79 RBIs 245 average very good season from the from the catcher I'm not saying that he didn't have a good season but I'm just saying that maybe we go for a legendary catcher and then Speaking of legendary, Jackie Robinson had 19 home runs, 84 RBIs. Obviously not a, a power hitter at all, but he did have a very good stolen base percentage, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 707. Then he uh, had a good slugging. He had a good OPS, 305 average. Good season for, for Jackie Robinson. Gary Sanchez off the bench is just off the bench, I guess. Not really anything crazy. Same thing for Eugenio Suarez. George Springer is really the only guy who got to play a whole lot. He played 58 games. And he made the most of it. He had a 277 ERA, or, you know, ERA average, uh, 555 slugging, 921 OPS. Good, good off the bench production from George Springer. And also good off the field or off the bench production from Dansby Swanson. 241 average, eight home runs, 17 RBIs, 608 slugging, 926 OPS. Very good season for Dansby Swanson. And now we'll go to the. Pitcher rotation, Randy Johnson, 16 and seven. He pitched 215 innings, allowed 226 hits, 101 earned runs, 42 home runs gone, 248 strikeouts is crazy. He had a 4.22 ERA, a 129 WHIP, and his Ks per nine were 10.37. Okay, those are good numbers for for uh, Randy Johnson. Jordan Belazovic, I don't know why he started. Oh, because Clayton Kershaw got hurt. That's right, I forgot that. I was gonna say why is Clayton Kershaw not starting, but it's because. Uh, the big man Clayton Kershaw was hurt. Then we go to Madison Bumgarner. He went 18 and six. Great season for Madison Bumgarner. 209 innings pitched, uh, 95 earned runs. Only 27 of those were home runs. Only 65 walks. I mean that's a lot of walks, but still a very good season. 405 average, a 130 WHIP. Very good year for Madison Bumgarner. Dontra Willis D Train 13 and 10. He had 110 earned runs. A lot of earned runs for Dontra Willis. A 511 average. We need a Drop that down a little bit. He kind of got crazy there, but he is young. He's only 23 with a potential, so he will hopefully get a little bit better as we go on this series. He had good good pitching, good stats. Jack, Jack Flaherty, I think, led our team in wins. Oh, no, he didn't. He, uh, Bumgarner led the team with 18, 
but then uh, Randy Johnson and Flaherty tied with 16 along with Kershaw. So at one point, Flaherty was leading the team with in wins. 16 and 9 record, a 4.28 uh, ERA, 130 whip. And those are good numbers for Jack Flaherty. And then Clayton Kershaw, 16 and 9, 210 innings pitched, a 4.2 uh, 4 average, 123 whip. Good per nines for what they're worth. <laughs> and then on the bullpen side of things, Blazovic went 0 for 3 in his three starts that he had. Uh, he did not have a good season, but he's 23 years old with A potential. I didn't expect him to have that great of a season, mainly because he's such a low overall at 74 going up against such high overall hitters, like we mentioned at the beginning of the episode. So I did not expect him to have that great of an, uh, a debut, I guess you could say, a first season, a rookie season. We'll see how he does later on, and he might end up being a guy that we trade away to get a super really, like a really good bullpen arm or a hitter or something in a trade later on. Same thing with Nick Lodolo. He didn't play at all this year, but we I think we brought him up in September, and he didn't just didn't play. Or maybe we just brought him up now. I don't remember. Blake went three for five or three and five. One save, four blown saves. I don't know why he was out there for blown saves, but whatever. Maybe Gallegos was tired. 364 average, 130 whip. Eh, not great per nines, but he did okay. Colin McHugh, 5 and 3. 84 innings pitch, 396 average, 121 whip. Same thing about his per nines. Chris Stratton, I don't think played. He didn't play. No, Ramirez didn't play either. Brian Wilson had a 2 and 2 record, 3 saves, 5 blown saves in 32 innings. A 5.57 ERA, a 145 whip, and okay, per nines, not great. But then our masterful closer, Giovanni Gallegos, 4-1, 40 saves, 6 blown saves, and 45 and 54 innings pitched. He had a 3.48 ERA, a 114 whip, and good per nines. Giovanni Gallegos certainly pitched very, very well. So that is where we will leave it here. I guess we can find out actually who we're playing. Uh, oh, look at that. The Shuckers, hardly know her, are going on to the AA Championship, taking on the Trash Pandas. What a name. So we are taking on the Diamondbacks in the divisional round, the ALDS. But we can find out. Actually, we can't find out until next episode because we don't want to simulate this game until next episode. But that is going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys did enjoy a little bit of uh, ending the season action there. Uh, let me know down below if you thought that our season went well, if you thought that it didn't go well. We got 100 wins. 100 wins exactly. So hopefully next season we can improve on that. I'm certainly going to try and trade for some some legends, most notably probably Barry Bonds, <laughs> just uh, based solely off the fact that he had 61 home runs. Maybe we try and trade for Babe Ruth. Maybe we try and get Babe Ruth and Shohei Otani and have them both on the same team. That'd be pretty crazy. I don't know. We'll find out next episode or a couple episodes now in the off season. So I hope you guys did enjoy. Thank you for stopping by and watching. Smash that like button if you did enjoy. Hit that notification bell. Subscribe to the channel. Join the Juice Club. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.